Today, I'm here to tell you about the new groundbreaking research that proves how Oticon Open gives better speech understanding in noisy environments. With less effort, users can take part in those conversations without feeling left behind and reclaim the situations that they used to avoid. But why are these noisy situations so difficult for people with a hearing loss to cope with? First of all, there's the loss or the malfunction of the hair cells within the cochlea. But the hearing loss probably also means a loss of connection between the hearing nerve and the remaining hair cells. The result is that people with a hearing loss, they operate under an increased cognitive load when dealing with this type of unpredictable setting. It becomes extremely challenging to make sense of the sounds. We all use our brains and our working memory when decoding speech. When someone talks to us, we compare what we hear with information already stored in our long-term memory. The brain is able to match the words we hear with words we already know and get meaning out of them. As long as it's quiet around us, the task is easy, but as the noise level goes up, recognition gets harder and goes down. But the brain has this extraordinary ability to focus on the sounds of interest and ignore everything else. This ability we call selective attention. Selective attention is the brain's own noise reduction system and it's extremely efficient. However, as the hearing deteriorates, so does the ability to use selective attention. Losing the ability to use selective attention puts a heavy strain on mental capacity to make sense of a conversation in noise. It calls for a lot more cognitive effort from the listener. There is a way to measure cognitive effort. It can actually be read from the size of our pupils. The pupils react to changes in the sympathetic nervous system. This is an automatic reaction. We cannot control it. The pupils will dilate when the brain is subject to cognitive load and has to put in effort. We can make use of this automatic reaction to measure how much effort the brain actually needs to put in in order to understand what's being said in a noisy environment. The pupil size and reactivity can be measured using pupillometry. In this test, the person is placed in front of an eye tracker, which continuously monitors the size of the pupils and the pupil dilation. With a specific setup of loudspeakers around the listener, it is possible to create a listening situation with high complexity. At the same time, we use the eye tracker to measure the cognitive load on the listener's brain. Open Sound Navigator is a noise reduction system in Oticon Open Hearing Aids. It works so fast and so precisely that it can attenuate unwanted noise even between words. It continuously rebalances the soundscape and provides constant access to all relevant sounds and, more importantly, to speech. An independent study has investigated the effect of Open Sound Navigator. The study used pupillometry to test listening effort and hearing in noise test the hint to test understanding in noise. The study included 24 participants with mild to moderate hearing losses and the tests were done over a broad range of listening conditions. This graph shows the results. On the x-axis, you see the listening environments of everyday life, from a quiet night at home to a dinner at a noisy restaurant. The noisier it gets, the lower the signal-to-noise ratio. In these different sound environments, we have various degrees of speech understanding, and this is illustrated on the y-axis. If speech understanding drops below 50%, it becomes really difficult to follow a conversation. When only half of the speech information is intelligible, the listener will have to rely heavily on guesswork. The dotted curve shows speech understanding of a person wearing a well-fitted hearing aid with noise reduction switched off. Look how speech recognition drops significantly as soon as the noise becomes louder than the speech. Or in other words, 
when the signal to noise ratio becomes negative. So, following a conversation at a crowded party or a noisy reception becomes almost impossible for hearing aid users. Now, the solid curve shows what happens when you turn on Open Sound Navigator. Now, the signal to noise ratio corresponding to 50% is lowered by an impressive 5 dB. This means that with Open Sound Navigator, users get access to environments where they were lost before. It allows hearing aid users to engage and to participate even in very noisy situations. Especially notice the data point at minus 4 dB SNR. A situation like this can be compared to a noisy restaurant. Here, speech understanding moves from 20 to 75%. This is the difference between isolation and participation. When speech understanding is improved, it also has an impact on how challenging it feels to participate in a conversation. When we examine the cognitive load on listeners using Open Sound Navigator, in all these different situations, there's a significant drop. It's simply less exhausting for the brain to keep up. So let's go back to the graph showing the different listening environments. Now the y-axis represents pupil dilation or cognitive load. The more dilated the pupil is, the more effort is put into understanding the speech. Mind you, putting effort into any given task is not necessarily a bad thing. If you put effort into something, you do it because you think it's worth it. You get something out of it. But we all have our limits, and at some point we get tired and we have no more energy to provide the brain. We give up. And that is what is reflected in this illustration. The blue dotted line shows the pupil dilation of people fitted with hearing aids with no noise reduction. Situations with little or no interfering background noise do not require so much effort from the listener. However, as soon as the noise is introduced, it quickly becomes more demanding. So, the brain needs to put in more effort. Just below 0 dB SNR, the pupil size decreases. This is the tipping point. It's not a sign of the task becoming easier, on the contrary. At this point, the noise is becoming so disruptive that putting in more effort doesn't make any difference. So, the listener loses motivation and gives up. In real life, this represents a lively dinner at a restaurant. The hearing aid user has no chance of communicating, and the natural reaction is resignation. The solid blue line shows what happens when Open Sound Navigator is activated. Firstly, there's a clear reduction in effort, not just in noisy situations, but across a broad range of listening conditions. So even if the user doesn't go out to noisy places that often, there's still a lot of energy to be saved on reduced listening effort. Secondly, the tipping point has moved towards more noisy environments. Now the user will be able to participate and to engage in more situations despite the noise. And furthermore, you don't have to put in so much effort. It means more resources in the brain for other things such as remembering and responding. Oticon has developed the brain hearing technology in Oticon Open to give the brain better conditions to perform. This study clearly reveals that Open Sound Navigator gives better speech understanding even in the noisiest environments and reduces listening effort over a broad range of listening conditions. Open Sound Navigator empowers users to overcome the noise and enjoy a much more pleasurable communication and social participation, even in environments that used to be too difficult and frustrating. But how does this new approach compare to more conventional ways of handling noise? To investigate this, we tested three different Miniride hearing aids from three different manufacturers. One hearing aid used traditional directionality, one used a very narrow beamformer, 
and the last was Oticon Open with Open Sound Navigator. All hearing aids were fitted according to prescription and used the same acoustic coupling. The test was set up so that the test persons had to follow a conversation with three other speakers. One speaker directly in front and one on each side. The test was set up to create a realistic setting with multiple speakers and background noise. The listener had to understand speech, not knowing who would speak next. To increase the difficulty, babble noise was introduced between the three speakers and steady state noise was presented from behind. A pretty complex listening situation, not too far from a conversation in a busy restaurant or a crowded reception. The results were noteworthy. Oticon Open delivers superior speech understanding from the center speaker and it is on par with narrow directionality, even though it remains open to all relevant surrounding sounds. And it clearly outperforms traditional directionality. Furthermore, Oticon Open vastly outperforms both competitive technologies for the side speakers. This truly places it in a class of its own for multiple speaker understanding. It's also important to underline that with narrow directionality, users may experience the downside of a narrow beamformer. The front speaker will be isolated and they may experience an artificial and closed listening environment. This will not happen with Open Sound Navigator that delivers access to distinct speech from all other directions as well. The results prove that with Oticon Open, people with a hearing loss no longer have to live with the compromises of directionality-based technologies. They can get back into social situations that they used to be lost in. Open Sound Navigator opens up to all meaningful sounds and delivers significantly better speech understanding from multiple speakers with less effort. By helping the brain recover its natural focus, Oticon Open gives users the opportunity to reclaim situations once lost and enrich their lives. Thank you for listening.